to you all for making it happen. Thank you. And um, I, you know, if, if you all think you like the music this week, wait till next week for our Music Sunday. It is going to be something special. So thank you. Brittany Brown is a noted shame researcher. Surprisingly, it's not a popular field. <laughs> Her work centers around looking at what causes people shame and doing qualitative research to explore how human beings overcome shame. So in 2017, she found her research pointing towards belonging in the midst of finding out that so many people feel isolated, alone, and as if they do not belong. Have you had a moment, have you had a moment in your life, or maybe a few, where it felt so clear that you did not belong? When you were not picked for the team, or you said something that turned heads, or even a moment of just being left behind. It is so hard. It's so painful. And these moments in our lives speak to the spiritual disconnectedness that Brene Brown talks about when we have felt most out of touch with our shared humanity, when we have felt entirely outside of it. It is important to honor these moments this morning as we did in our meditation, just to sit with them for a moment, rather than running from them or returning back to them in moments of anxiety or shame. To bring intention and attention to when we have not belonged. And I want to just, just so we can do a little bit of the inverse, I want to invite you to pause and consider a time in your mind's eye when you felt you completely belonged. A time when you felt seen and heard, yes, heard, with family or friends or a community. When you felt loved and accepted for who you are. Belonging is something that we actively seek. Yesterday, during this talk with Susan L. Taylor, this fundraiser that was shared during our Joys and Sorrows to support our civil rights heritage site, I heard her say, and I heard her say this, we heal better in community. And I'll repeat that again. We heal better in community. We seek out a sense of belonging as sustenance, as a way to be healed through being seen and understood, as acknowledgement that none of us of common shared humanity. It hurts. It's hard. And yet to belong is a nuanced thing. It doesn't mean we all need to think alike. As many of us can I hope draw to mind times when we felt we belonged with folks with whom we often disagree. To belong is to be appreciated and accepted for who we are. On the back of this book, Braving the Wilderness, The Quest for True Belonging and the Courage to Stand Alone, Brown writes, true belonging doesn't require us to change who we are. It requires us to be who we are. So to actually belong means really honoring the truth of who we are alongside others. It is about being ourselves rather than staying silent on something we feel strongly about just so we can be accepted, or even going along with what others think 
so that we might be a part of the group. We are living in a time and a place where people are increasingly feeling more alone and disconnected. If you are experiencing this, you are not alone. If you are feeling like you are not even understood, or even if you have felt like you have needed to change something about yourself in order to fit in, you are not alone. None of us has this thing down pat. But I find Brown's four elements of true belonging intriguing, and I want to explore them here with you so that they might sink, in, sink into our being a little deeper. So the first piece that she states is that people are hard to hate up close. Move in. Now, I know it's not everyone's uh, spiritual cup of tea, but this year, for Lent, I am giving up social media. <laughs> uh, see, what I noticed happening each day was that I was getting closer and closer to my phone. And as this closeness developed, and quite frankly, this Lenten practice is working because I don't know where my phone is right now. <laughs> I'm so sorry to mind it for you. But <laughs> as this closeness developed, you will get what I'm doing. I began to feel further and further away from those around me. I found myself at traffic lights, sneaking a quick peek at what's going on with the world. When the light was red, I found myself at gatherings of friends and at home, focusing more on the phone than on the good company surrounding me. And it's hard to leave social media, but what I have noticed is that this has become a location in my life where my self-righteousness rages. Yeah, so other folks? Yes? Uh -huh. And my comparison to others runs rampant. Today, like, we're talking about belonging in both of these things. Self-righteousness and comparison are antithetical to feelings of belonging. In a mode of comparison, we look at what we perceive to be going on in someone else's life and use those perceptions to judge ourselves, whether in a positive light or a negative. It creates this distance where we often are not like actually trying to get to know someone else, but rather see them for their achievements and accomplishments and lament the things they have done that we cannot possibly do. In self-righteousness, I believe I am right often over and above someone else. In this stance, there is distance too, but, but from a different place, perhaps. We are separate because one or both parties believe themselves to be better than the other. So if we seek to belong, if we seek to feel connection in all of our authenticity, then the invitation is to risk getting close to others, to risk being vulnerable and engaging in dialogue, rather than sticking with our own perceptions and self-righteous truth-telling. The invitation is to close the distance and have a conversation. My hope, my hope, and I'll let you all know in April, is that giving up social media in doing so, more of this can happen in my life. A higher quality of human interaction is possible. And I might also develop a deeper appreciation for the present moment rather than fleeing into fearful news stories and pictures of other people's meals. <laughs> um, what's going on there? So the second element that Brene Brown lifts up is to speak truth to bullshit and be civil. <laughs> my, my grandmother is looking down on me and telling me, you know, you can't swear from up there. <laughs> but bullshit is often what happens <laughs> when we don't know fully what we are talking about. It can be a wholesale dismissal of the truth, a reluctance to admit that we don't have the full picture or even when we are unwilling to call attention to truth because it all feels relative and possibly 
be hard to name. It turns out there's actually a book called On Bullshit, <laughs> written by a philosophy professor named Harry Frankfurt. And these are just sort of a brief summary of his ideas of what bullshit could be. <laughs> now, I am a truth teller at my core. It is part of the work I do to consistently strive for honesty and to present the truth as I know it. But the hardest thing I struggle to be honest about are the moments when I don't know. I often have an opinion. I imagine many of us do here. It's a part of our Unitarian Universalist heritage and legacy. And I wonder if some of the deeper spiritual work we are called to do, and that I am called to do, is to be okay with admitting that I do not know something. Or even, even just admitting that I don't have enough information to weigh in on an issue. It's hard. In this element of belonging, Brene Brown invites us to tell the truth in moments when we are prone to BS. In moments when we hear it from others. And the key is to remain civil to respect the other person's inherent worth and dignity, to tell the truth without demeaning or tearing down. It is hard, but not impossible. And how does this value serve belonging? It breaks down the with us or against us mentality, the either or thinking that is so divisive to human community. It acknowledges that in speaking our truth, no human being is disposable. To be civil while speaking truth helps us to not be the perpetrators of shutting someone else out, perhaps with stringent rules about what is right and what is wrong. And I really want to acknowledge here that belonging is not about remaining neutral in ways that side with the oppressor, but rather it's about speaking the truth we know with civility, not to humanize others whose perspectives are different something that is a hard practice. It is a paradox. I think sometimes it's easier said than done. But this stuff is hard, and it turns out, it turns out that seeking belonging is actually hard work. It doesn't come easy. So her third point is to hold hands with strangers. Um, this past week, I received a handful of emails from folks who were concerned about holding hands in church because of the spread of the coronavirus. So we may not want to take this one so literally today. But what I will say is that the spirit here is to reach out to people that we don't know and connect. The intention is not just to stick to those we feel comfortable with, but if we seek true belonging, we may find it in relationships that we have as yet not imagined. If we are as spiritually disconnected as this research shows, then we may as well make an effort to make connections, even if they don't turn into relationships. And there's, there's something here about who we feel comfortable connecting with and who we don't. Often the strangers who are easiest to connect with are those we can outwardly tell share our values and life experiences at times meaning people of a similar racial identity or class status. This invitation is really to connect with those who would otherwise remain strangers. It is to break down the barriers that might separate us through a simple one-to-one -one human interaction. You know those moments when you get in an elevator with someone else and all remains quiet and perhaps a bit awkward? Have you, have you been there? Yeah? Yeah? Great time to connect, actually. Or in the grocery line, the people you are waiting with or the folks who are bagging the groceries, our days are full of strangers. The opportunities are endless. Connecting with them can only increase our sense of belonging and theirs as well. And so the fourth piece that Brene Brown writes about is strong back, soft Front, wild heart. Strong back, soft front, wild heart. One of my greatest spiritual teachers asked me once, what would it look like to live life with an unguarded heart? What would it look like to 
live life with an unguarded heart. I think a part of this is feeling confident in who we are while also maintaining a posture of openness. It is about growing into places where our egos are not what we lead with, but rather a sense of self that comes from introspective reflection, self-definition, and hopefully just a dash of humility. It's about knowing that we have more to learn and leading with that stance. And it may be about allowing our heart to be at the center, revealing its contents and trusting that even if we get hurt, there is a larger love holding us in the midst of it all. There is more to learn from the experience. There are things to gain. We have more to gain than to lose. I believe that this is what Brown is writing about. A strong back is about holding our boundaries and showing up for ourselves. It is about being strong in who we are. A soft front is approaching others with openness. And a wild heart comes when we live in the paradox of joy and struggle. When we are willing to acknowledge the pain and the suffering of this moment and still appreciate the joy and the beauty that exists among us in this world because it is here. This is big hearted stuff. And much of it comes from life experiences of knowing criticism, suffering, and pain, while also seeking to create and spread beauty with those around us. Friends, in a world where we are increasingly separate, where we are isolated more and more in our daily lives, to seek belonging is a deep spiritual gift. To know where we can go to find it and to be willing to risk connection is a much needed endeavor because the truth is, as I see it, in 2020, we are in need of relationships to weather the storm. So much is going on in our world and in our country. And if we are to survive it all and emerge on the other side with our humanity intact, what I know is that we are going to need to be connected. To seek true belonging is deep soul work. To seek true belonging takes work, yet it is so worth it. None of us will heal, seek justice, bring joy, or acknowledge suffering alone. We need one another to do that. We heal better when we heal in community. So may you go forward this, this morning to seek belonging amongst those you know and those you do not. May you remember that we are, all of us, interconnected in a way that we cannot escape, yet must continually choose to see and honor. And may you know belonging in your life because it is a deep source of spiritual connection and healing. Amen. Blessed be. And may it be so.